Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the San Antonio Zoo Facebook Live. My name is Caitlin, and I'm an animal care specialist here at the zoo. And today, we're gonna be talking to you guys about a really fun thing that we get to do that not that it's not very um, accessible to guests, because usually when we do this, it's before the zoo is even open. So we're gonna be diving our hippo pool today, cleaning it out, making it all nice and pretty for the hippos. Um, and usually that's something that guests normally don't get to see. So we'll walk you through that a little bit. If you guys have any questions throughout the whole chat, please let me know, tip tap that into the comment section and we'll answer those questions as best we can. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So first thing that we have our divers do is we're gonna have them gear up. And we have all sorts of cleaning equipment that we use to help keep the pool nice and pretty. Um, we've got our wetsuits for the divers to make sure that they're nice and comfortable. Now the hippo pool is around 81 degrees today, so they're wearing their short, lovely wetsuits. Uh, but we do have some long sleeves and long legs ones as well for the cold weather. Um, they've got weight belts on because when you're in a wetsuit, you're actually a little bit more buoyant, more floaty than you normally are. So having that weight belt really helps you to stay down in a neutral buoyancy area when you're trying to scrub the underwater windows. We also have some fins down here. If they need to use their fins, they can do that. Um, as well as scrub brushes and some scrubby sponges for the windows. And then we've got our net to pull up any extra hay, leftover food from the bottom of the pool. So lots of fun. Um, now we have our two working divers here. This is Justin and Tori. Um, they're going to be getting in the water, cleaning our pool today. And then Hillary over here is our safety spotter. So she's going to be our lifeguard and that means she gets some special equipment. So Hillary, here you go. You've got your lovely lifeguard buoy over here. Um, so she'll maintain safety with that. We also have a shepherd's crook behind her and she can use either one of those tools um, to help our divers get out of the pool safely if they start struggling or if they need some help. So she also called in to our safety EMTs here on site, just letting them know that we are getting in the pool. Again, just for safety, this is just a precaution, making sure that we are safe at all times with our workers um, so that we can get the job done and do it in a nice safe manner. Are the divers also animal care specialists or only divers? Are the divers animal care specialists or only divers? That's a great question. These guys are animal care specialists. So part of our job description is to clean our exhibits and in the hippo pool that means we get to get in the water so making sure that our animal care specialists and zookeepers are comfortable in the water comfortable swimming because this water is about six to seven feet deep at its deepest point you need to make sure that you're comfortable swimming in the pool um, you need to make sure you're comfortable doing some breath holding and that kind of thing uh, to help keep the windows nice and clean we also need to make sure that our safety spotter is also a comfortable and strong swimmer so that in case we have to perform a rescue, we're fully capable of doing that as well. So, looks like we're all geared up and ready to go. Let's dive in. Absolutely not. Hey, no, no diving allowed. She makes for a really good lifeguard, right? All right, <laughs> safely get in the pool, you guys. We're practicing safety here. So they're gonna go ahead and get in the water. And one of the first things that we do when we're diving the hippo pool is we actually just go in and take a look around. So they're gonna check out the bottom of the pool, make sure that there's nothing down there that shouldn't be. So nothing in the exhibit has fallen off. There's no nuts or bolts um, laying on the bottom of the pool that could potentially injure the hippos. There's nothing broken or causing sharp edges that could cause an injury. Um, and then they're going to be kind of looking at our windows, making sure that there's no leakage or cracks or anything like that. Um, that plexiglass is very thick. It's gotta be nice and thick because one, the animals are very strong and they tend to lean or bump up against it when they're moving around or playing. Um, but it's also very thick because there's a lot of water in this pool. It's about 100,000 gallons of water. And so you have to have nice thick windows to help keep that water pressure um, and hold it against the, the strong glass. So they're checking everything out right now. Um, you guys may notice there's no hippos in the pool and that's important. Um, hippos are very territorial animals. We never interact with our hippos um, directly. So Justin's over there scrubbing at the top of the windows, getting some of that nasty icky hay off of there. And then we'll go down and show you guys um, kind of a before and after window. So we'll show you what it looks like before it's cleaned and then after it's cleaned, you can see a big difference, especially depending on the time of year. Um, right now it's starting to get a little warmer, so lots of sunshine, algae tends to grow, and you know, when you're working with any aquatic animal, um, algae is gonna be a never ending battle. So we're gonna be working on all that and show you a little bit of a before and after. Um, but going back to the hippos, 
they're going to be inside their barn right now. All of our interactions with our hippos is through some sort of barrier, uh, and that's for our safety as well as theirs and their comfortability. So like I said, they're territorial animals. Um, they're going to defend that territory, even though they know their keepers and they have really strong relationships with them. We're not going to put them in a situation that would make them feel uncomfortable or defensive. So right now, the only animals on exhibit are all of our lovely fish in the pool, as well as Kevin the mallard over there. He hangs out. Um, we get questions about Kevin a lot, actually. He, he is a wild duck that has decided the hippo pool is a great place to live. Um, we have tried to encourage him to move on to a different area, and he keeps coming back over here. Um, and, you know, who's to blame him? There's a safe spot, no predators here, the hippos leave him alone, and he gets to nibble on any hippo leftover snacks and treats. So, all the yummy things. So, he hangs out with us. There's a few questions. Okay. About how cold is the water and how deep is the pool? So any time throughout the year, the water temperature is somewhere between about 78 and 83, 84 degrees. Um, right now, we just checked the temperature this morning and we do that every day, but the water temperature right now is 81 degrees. So it's nice and warm, um, very comfortable for the hippos and for our divers. Um, there are some times throughout the year, especially in December and January, where we still get in the water, but the water is definitely way warmer than the air temperature. Um, and that makes diving in the pool really, really nice. However, it makes getting out kind of a challenge because <laughs> you get really cold. Um, and then the other question was how deep is the pool? At its deepest point, this pool is about eight feet deep. So like I said, it holds about 100,000 gallons of water um, and all that water is consistently cycled through our animal life support system, through a filtration system. And if you guys were checking out all of our Facebook chats last week, you may have seen Nelson and he's a member of our aquarium department. He was talking about our life support system, which I think is really cool. I never knew how all that worked before I started working here. So if you are interested in something like that, definitely go back through our Facebook and check out Nelson's chat about the life support system. It's very, very cool. What's that over there? What's that over there? So we've got that really cool log jam and that is um, a wall separating between two exhibits. Um, on the other side is our Nile Croc exhibit and his name is Boom. He's really, really cool. Um, I will say it is perfectly safe. There is absolutely no way for the Nile Croc to get into this pool. Um, but that's, again, that's something that we check and make sure so we know where he's at before we dive in our water here. But like I said, there's no way for him to climb over that log jam or that wall um, and get into this pool at all. Do we have fish that live in this exhibit with the hippos? Do we have fish in there? Yes, we do. So this pool is full of African cichlids. There are a variety of different colors and sizes. Um, there are also some really cool Plecostomus fish. Uh, they're kind of like algae sucker looking fish. They live down on the bottom and sometimes they even go down in the bottom of the grates. So once we go down to the windows, you'll be able to see all of our little fishy friends better. But we've got all sorts of fish in there. Don't ask me how many because there's a lot of them um, and they don't sit still long enough for me to count. So, but there's a lot and most of these guys are African cichlids. Great question. What's the hippo's favorite snack? What's the hippo's favorite snack? Well, hippos are herbivores, so they eat lots of plant matter. Um, here at the zoo, they get fed about 90 pounds of hay every single day. And they also get other different types of produce like lettuce, greens, um, sweet potatoes, melons, apples, and bananas, things like that. So all sorts of different things. And I think each hippo kind of has their own preference. So we have two hippos that live here at the San Antonio Zoo. Our youngest just turned five. His name is Timothy. I think that he likes apples and cantaloupe the best. Um, whereas his grandmother, Uma, she's about 45 and she's lived here at the San Antonio Zoo most of her life. But I think that her favorite snack is actually um, her grain that we give her. So we also give them um, like a grain pellet to help make sure that they're getting enough plant matter without having to graze on a whole bushel of hay every single day. So those condensed grain pellets are another good way to make sure they get all their calories. We have a special request to see Kevin. Special request to see Kevin. Let's go see Kevin. Okay. So like I said, he is a wild bird that has decided to live here in the hippo exhibit. Um, so we're not going to get too close because we don't want to stress him out. But Kevin is just hanging out over here. He usually doesn't bother us when we're in the pool. Um, there have been times where I've been diving in the water and accidentally came up like right underneath Kevin and I think it scared both of us. Um, so it startled him, but he's a really cool little duck. He hangs out here and um, like I said, he eats off the leftover things that the hippos tend to drop uh, in terms of their food. And he eats things in the pool. Um, 
But again, we even tried to encourage him to move on and go be a wild duck, but he doesn't have to worry about any predators here at the hippo pool. He gets food all the time. So he's just decided this is a great place to live and I can't really blame him. We have a few questions. Okay. How often is the water filtered for hippos? How often is the water filtered for the hippos? So the water is actually constantly going through our filtration system and it turns over um, the entire 100,000 gallons several times a day. So it'll actually constantly run through the system and constantly be filtering out anything that might be floating in the pool. Um, the most common thing that it actually filters out and cleans is any leftover food or hippo poop. Um, because when hippos eat about 90 pounds of hay every day, that tends to make a lot of poop when it goes through their system. So um, they do poop in the pool, make swimming in it nice and delicious. Um, but really it's just hay that hasn't been fully digested, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, that's gonna constantly run through our filtration system. Next question. Why don't the hippos eat the fish? Why don't the hippos eat the fish? I love this question, I love to talk about it. Um, so hippos, like I mentioned, are herbivores, but they actually have a mutualistic or symbiotic relationship with the cichlids in their environment. So they will come down in the water and the fish will swim over to the hippos and they will nibble on their skin and pick off any dead skin cells or any parasites that might be living on the hippo's skin. Um, the hippos will even open their mouth underwater and the fish will swim inside and they'll pick out any leftover hay or food from their gums. Uh, it helps keep their mouth nice and clean. So it's a mutualistic relationship because both species get something good out of working together and living together. So the hippos get nice and clean and the fish get a meal. Good question. Five-year-old Noah from Laredo would like to know how long hippos sleep a day. <laughs> Noah wants to know how long hippos sleep a day. That's a great question, Noah. And I couldn't give you a total time, but they don't necessarily sleep like we do where they sleep for hours at a time at night. They kind of nap off and on throughout the day and the night. Um, in their natural environment, they're actually pretty active in the evenings and at night because that's when it tends to be cooler. Over in Africa, it's very, very hot in their natural environment. And so them coming out of the water to graze and find all those plants that they like to eat can be really hot. And so they will stay in the water during the day. They'll nap off and on throughout the day and then come out of the water when the temperature goes down a little bit to graze and get all that food. Mm -hmm. where the hippos are, and if we're going to go down and look for the glass. Excellent. So for those of you joining us, welcome. My name is Caitlin. I'm one of the animal care specialists here. We are currently diving our hippo pool, and that's a process that we do at least once a week, but it's something that not very many guests get to see because we usually do this before the zoo is even open. So you guys are getting kind of a behind-the-scenes look at one of the ways that we help care for our animals here. Um, so right now we've got two working divers in the hippo pool. What they're doing is they are cleaning our windows, making sure that the pool is nice and safe for our hippos. So they dive and swim around, make sure that there's no sharp edges, there's nothing in the pool that shouldn't be there. Um, and then we go through and clean everything. So we scrub a lot of algae. Oh, that's our ongoing battle with our windows is we get all the algae off, any leftover hippo hay or hippo poop. Um, we try to move that towards our life support and filtration system. So we've got Justin over here hanging out underwater and then we have Tori on the other side and then we also have our lifeguard over here. Her name is Hillary. She's doing a fantastic job keeping an eye on both of our divers, making sure that they are safe. Um, so some of the equipment that we use for cleaning and diving our hippo pool, you can see Hillary's got our lovely lifeguard buoy there, just for safety to make sure that we are all good to go in the water and able to get our divers safely out of the pool in case they start feeling uncomfortable or start feeling unwell. Um, we can get them out of the water quickly and safely. We also have, uh, dive net over here to help scoop up anything that shouldn't be in the pool and we also have some scrubbies to help get the algae off and some window scrubbies that are a little bit softer so they don't scratch the acrylic. Our divers have the option to use fins to help them move around um, and they're also wearing wetsuits and weight belts as well as their dive mask. So we've got wetsuits going on. Um, they also have special little dive booties covering their feet because again for safety we don't want any sharp edges scratching on our feet in the pool. Um, just like we don't want anything to scratch or cut our hippo's feet as well. So we make sure that we're all nice and safe when we're working in the hippo pool. But it's one of my favorite things that I get to do because I love to swim. Oh, I didn't talk about the hippos are. So you guys might notice the only thing in the pool right now are our 
animal care specialists that are cleaning and you might see some fish down in there. The hippos are actually inside their barn. So let's go check out what they're doing right now. Um, you guys can see a little bit about our hippos because I know they're a fan favorite. They're definitely one of my favorite animals. But they're inside the barn right now. And the reason for that is because all of our interaction with our hippos is done through some sort of barrier. So if we're going to be out here cleaning, we need to make sure that they are behind a gate in their barn. Um, and again, that's for safety. Hippos are very territorial animals. So let's come up this way. Uh, we actually just passed through a gate and we're going to go pass through another open gate so we can move around. But you can see. Look at the mess. Look at, yeah, look at the mess. <laughs> Uh, I mentioned earlier that hippos eat about 90 pounds of hay every single day, as well as a variety of other produce. And when you eat a lot, you poop a lot. So a really kind of a funny fact about hippos before we get started is that when they poop, they swing their tail back and forth and they fan it out and it splatters everywhere and literally everywhere, you guys. It goes up on the ceiling, all over the walls, all over this. So fair warning, uh, while the hippos are inside, we haven't had a chance to clean in here yet, but that's okay because you guys can see what it looks like every single day. And this is what we do. We help take care of our hippos and we clean them out. Um, but you guys might see the fun sign on the wall over there. You know, it says caution splatter zone. And uh, that's, that's a real warning. So it is lots of fun. All righty, so it looks like our hippos are hanging out inside and we've got a fun playtime. Timothy, Uma, you want to come say hi to everybody? <laughs> so when they're inside in their barn, they've got a variety of different rooms. Right now they have access to this first stall. Hi, buddy. <laughs> this is Timothy. And then we've been having a hose run in there so they can have a little bit of water playtime. Timothy really seems to enjoy hose plays. Um, for whatever reason, he seems to enjoy that sensation. Sometimes he'll drink it. Sometimes he'll just let me spray him with it. So he's a lot of fun. How often do we clean the barn? How often do we clean the barn? Every single day. So it's a big barn because they're big animals. And so it takes a, a bit of time. Hi, buddy. He says, more water, please. How many hippos do we have and how old are they? they we have two hippos. Uh, this is Timothy. He is five years old. He actually just had a birthday last week. So he's getting to be a real big boy. And then his grandmother, Uma, is hanging out in the, uh, in the back of the stall over there. She just seems to be enjoying relaxing in that water. She's taking a nap. Um, she is 45 years old. Now, on average, hippos live anywhere between 25 and 35 years. Um, so up to 35 years is kind of an average under human care. And then, like I mentioned, Uma is 45 years old. So she's kind of an old lady, but we like to say that she is young at heart. So she does interact with her animal care specialist every day. She plays with Timothy. Uh, it's lots of fun to see them interact. Are we seeing the whole barn, or is there more space in the barn? So this is just one of the stalls in the barn. I don't know if Kat can point the camera kind of towards the back there, but they have another stall behind this one, um, straight back that way. So they have that one, and it's kind of an indoor-outdoor space. They've got a little bit of airflow from the outside on that, and then there is a solid door that closes, so we can close that off in the wintertime when it gets cold to keep them nice and warm. They also have two other stalls as well, so two more rooms, basically, um, next door. And then one of those rooms has a pool area that we can fill up with water. Um, and here, once Timothy's done playing with the hose, we can take, take you on a tour through the barn a little bit. So now that you're seeing Timothy up close, you can kind of see some of his really neat adaptations that he's got. Um, I don't know if you can see all these awesome little whiskers up here. Those are called vibrissae. And those kind of help hippos to sense things in their environment. If they're out in their natural environment and the water's really murky, those vibrissae help him to feel around and sense things in his environment. Um, you're just loving the water. Look at his tongue move. He says, yes, please, more water. You're also getting a really good look at his tusks here. Um, a hippo's tusks will grow continuously throughout their lifetime. And something that I think is really cool with Uma and Timothy, woo, Nash, um, is that some of the husbandry care or the training that we do with our animals involves us doing lots of desensitization and having Timothy allow us to touch his mouth and touch his teeth. 
um, we actually are able to file his tusks down to make sure that they're not growing too fast or growing in a way that'll harm other parts of his mouth. So up here, he's actually got a little pocket in his upper gums and his cheek there. Um, and that's where his tusks will slip into when his mouth is closed. But he really seems to enjoy uh, mouth tactile, is what we call it when we touch around his mouth. Um, again, he's just sitting there, let me play with the hose. I don't know if you can kind of see their skin in there, but whenever hippos are out of the water, their body secretes kind of an oily substance and it's pinkish in color, um, but it's called blood sweat. And it's not blood, it's not sweat, but that's kind of what it looks like, so that's where it gets its name. But what it is, it's an oily substance that lets these guys walk around in the sunshine um, without their skin getting hurt. So it's a natural built-in sunscreen. And they secrete it any time they're out of the water. It doesn't matter if it's hot or cold outside. Um, I just hosed Timothy off, so he doesn't have a whole lot of it on his skin right now. But hang out for a few minutes, and we'll see some more start coming up through his pores here. Ooh, he says, Cat, that was a surprise. More water, please. Um, but yeah, does anybody have any questions about Uma and Timothy, guys? While we're having our little hose playtime here with Timothy. How much does Timothy weigh now? So last I saw, Timothy weighs around 2,675 pounds. So he's a growing boy. Um, what's really cool, another really neat husbandry behavior that we are working on with Timothy and Uma um, is having them walk over the scale. So we actually have a scale installed in the floor of their barn. I don't know if Kat can pan over here. You can see that big gray metal thing on the floor. That is our scale. And that's hooked up to a monitor on the wall over there. And um, we can have them walk across it and stand still so that we can get their weight. And we try to do that once or twice a week, um, especially with Timothy, because he'll continue to grow. Hippos can weigh up to about 8,000 pounds when they're fully grown adult male hippos. Um, so we don't know if he'll get quite that big, but he's only five years old, you guys, and he already weighs almost 3,000 pounds. So you can imagine how much bigger he's going to get as he continues to grow. Noah would like to know why hippos wiggle their ears so much. <laughs> Noah, why do hippos wiggle ears so much? Um, they don't have a way to close their ears when they're underwater. So they kind of pin their ears back along their head to keep some of the water out of their ears. But when they come up to the surface, they've got all that water in their ears. And so they wiggle their ears to get the water out. Um, they also have some, not vibrissae, but they have hair on their ears. And again, that can kind of help sense things in their environment. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I'll get a hair that like tickles my ear and it just, it itches. So you got to shake your head, shake your ear to get that tickle and that itch out of there. Timothy says, okay, thanks, Caitlin. That was a fun playtime. So what we're going to do now, guys, is we'll take you down in front of the windows where you guys can see. Ugh. They do lay down. They do lay down. Uh, <laughs> Timothy decided just to flop down in the pool. You can see his lovely pink belly, and he's going to sit there and cuddle with Grandma. <laughs> he might go take a nap as well. Oh, you're so cute, Tim. All right. So let's walk downstairs, and you guys can actually see in front of the windows. I'm actually going to come through the pillions right here. Um, so we're going to walk downstairs very carefully, because it's I can't tell if it's a ladder or if it's actually a stairs, but... It's very steep, so we're going to be careful going down. But um, you guys can see another one of our safety pieces of equipment here. This is our life ring that we'll use if ever we need it. Um, we can kind of take a peek over the edge of the pool and see where they're at. There's Justin down there at the window. Justin, wave hello. Hi, Justin. <laughs> He's down there still working on the windows. And then we have Hillary over there keeping watch as our lifeguard again. Um, they're doing a great job. So. Let's go see how gross the windows are before we clean them and then what they look like afterwards. And then we'll be able to see if they missed any spots. I'm going to go down backwards, so it'll be a weird view. There you go. Maybe I'll get your head. Or Kat's going to get my head as we go down. Can you tell us where Timothy's mom is? Um, yes, I can. So the question was, where is Timothy's mom? Timothy was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, so he is at that, uh, she is at that zoo still. But the fun thing about Karen, his mom, is that she is Uma's last offspring. So she's Uma's youngest daughter. This is one of our other animal life support areas that Nelson talks about in his video. 
And then we come out and we're in Africa live. How fun. So this is what our windows look like kind of after cleaning, which is really, really nice. Um, one of the biggest reasons that we clean the windows, not only is because it helps keep the animals healthy, but because it helps keep the view and everything else nice and pretty for our guests. So there goes Justin across the window. Show off, yeah, he's an excellent swimmer. Um, let's go see if he missed any spots. Oh no, he didn't get this window clean yet. So you can see that there's all this stuff up here on the window. Um, that's leftover poop hay, because like I said, when they poop, they swing their tail back and forth and it splatters everywhere. Um, so it makes a big mess. Out in their natural environment, that's actually how they mark their territory. That's how they say, hey, this is my turf, back off. Um, so what Justin's doing now is he's getting any leftover stuff that is down in the window edges. Um, and he's gonna be cleaning off any of the algae. So you can see that they've got some scratches in the windows here. Um, and all those scratches are filled with this brownish, greenish algae. And that makes for a not very pretty window. So Justin's gonna come in here and we're gonna scrub all that algae away. So we can sit there and watch him while he cleans. We'll see how long he can hold his breath. Um, I have gotten questions in the past, do we scuba the windows? And the answer is no, um, it's not necessary. We can free dive this pool pretty easily. Um, again, and then scuba diving actually requires a lot more gear and a lot more safety equipment. So, um, you know, if we can do this safely and in a great manner already, why work any harder to create more work for ourselves because we have to put together all that equipment, all that setup, all that gear. Um, so this window's already been cleaned. Looks like Justin did a pretty good job. You can see all those beautiful cichlids down in the pool swimming around. Um, you can see we've got the bottom grate pulled up. That's an intake area, so that's where the water starts flowing into the filters um, out of the pool. And then there's an outtake system that comes out actually from the wall that the windows are on. So right underneath the windows, that's where the water comes back into the pool. We do have quite a few questions. Excellent, more questions, I love it. What do the hippos eat and how much do they eat? What do hippos eat and how much? So hippos are herbivores, and that means they're plant eaters. Um, our hippos get about 90 pounds of hay every single day, um, and that's per hippo. And then they also get a variety of different types of produce. So they get lettuce, kale, other greens, as well as um, fruits and vegetables, things like sweet potatoes, uh, apples, sometimes bananas. Every once in a while, they'll get extra treats. Um, for example, <laughs> hello, Hillary. They're awesome lifeguard making sure our guys are safe. Um, they'll get extra treats, so things like marshmallows or anything that's extra that they wouldn't normally get in their diet, diet uh, we consider that enrichment. So lots of other fun things. What's our next question? What is their lifespan? What's their lifespan? Great one. After uh, out their natural environment, they live anywhere between 25, maybe 35 years. The average lifespan for a hippo under human care is around 35. Um, our oldest hippo, Uma, she is 45 years old, so she's quite the old lady. Um, and they can live a little bit longer under human care simply because they don't have to worry about finding food every day. They get their food provided to them, all the delicious fruits and veggies that are, um, you know, restaurant quality. Uh, our guys get really good quality food every single day. They also have access to veterinary care 24 hours a day if they need it. So pretty cool. These questions kind of go hand in hand. Okay. Do you do any training with them, and how do you get the hippos to come out of the pool and go inside? Great question. So the question was, do we do any training with them, and how do we get the hippos out of the water to go inside? Uh, all of our training, first I'll preface this by saying, all of our training with our animals is voluntary. There is nothing that I can do to make a 3,000 pound hippo do something that he doesn't want to. So we, first of all, build really strong relationships with our animals, including the hippos. So Justin and Hillary and all of the animal care specialists that take care of them work really hard to build relationships with the hippos and hopefully um, make it so that they want to come out and spend time with us. So we will call them up to a gate um, and they'll come up out of the water. We can reinforce that behavior or reward that behavior by giving them some of their food as reinforcement. Um, or you guys saw earlier that Timothy really seems to enjoy tactile, so we can do a playtime or a tactile, some touching on his nose or on his tongue, um, things that they seem to enjoy. 
and they can come inside, but they also know that inside that barn is a lot of really good stuff. We'll put a bunch of their food out in their barn um, because we want to make that a positive space for them. They, we want them to come out and spend time there. So good questions. How would somebody become an animal care specialist? How would somebody become an animal care specialist? That's one of my favorite questions that I get from our guests. Um, the most important thing about being an animal care specialist is you have to have the passion for it. You have to love animals. Um, there's Tori down there. She's doing a great job cleaning our windows. Um, but to become an animal care specialist, you have to have experience working with animals. And that's not just your cats, uh, cats and dogs and other pets at home. Um, uh, employers in the zoo field like to see experience working with animals like you might find in a zoo. So whether that's volunteering at a wildlife shelter or a wildlife rehab center, um, doing internships where you volunteer and spend time with zookeepers and other, other animal care specialists, um, things like that. So they want to see that you have the passion for working with animals um, and have experience working with animals as well. Also, another requirement in a lot of zoos or a lot of other facilities is you have to have a college degree um, or be working towards a degree. So most of the folks on my team have degrees in some sort of science field, but it doesn't matter what field it is. You don't have to be um, a zoologist to become an animal care specialist or a zookeeper. Uh, I have several friends in the animal training and animal care fields that have arts degrees or communications degrees. I have a friend who's even an architect. Um, that's how he started out before he became an animal trainer. So you can have a degree in whatever you are passionate about, whatever you want to learn about. Um, but again, having that degree shows that you are committed to something and you can commit to getting that degree. And that shows a level of commitment to your career as well. Angela would like to know if we get in the water even when it's cold. <laughs> That's a great question, Angela. Do we get in the water even when it's cold? And the answer is yes, but it depends on the temperature. So we actually have a kind of a temperature cutoff range um, where we will not get in the pool. One, because it's a safety manner for our animal care specialists. We don't want them to get sick because they have to walk around all day and clean up and do work outside after we get in the hippo pool, so when they're all wet. Um, if the temperature is under about 50 degrees, it's up to the keeper's comfortability level. Um, and if it's under about 45 degrees, we will not get in the pool. Just because we want to make sure that our, our animal care specialists don't get sick. How many people work with the hippos? That's a great question. So the majority of our team will work with the hippos kind of throughout the day. Whoop, there's a whale there. Um, <laughs> But they'll work with our hippos throughout the day. We have a team of 14 people in my department, and all of us will work with the hippos at one point or other. But in one single day, they usually have a, one primary keeper that's in charge of cleaning their exhibit, making sure they get all their food and their medications or anything that they need throughout the day. And that can rotate throughout the week. Good questions. Anything else? Are hippos related to rhinos? Great question. And the answer is no. Hippos are actually more closely related to whales and dolphins rather than anything else or any other land animals. So their closest relatives are going to be those cetaceans, those whales and dolphins, rather than the rhinos, even though they look closer to a rhino than they would to a dolphin. How do we determine breeding and if Timothy or Uma are going to be that's a great question. So the question was, how do we determine breeding and whether or not Timothy or Uma are going to be breeding with any other hippos? Um, obviously, they will not be breeding with each other because they are related. Timothy is Uma's grandson, so we wouldn't want those genetics to mix because they're too closely related. But man, Justin's just so tall. <laughs> He's the only person on our team that can actually stand up in this pool and still be able to breathe. <laughs> um, but we are actually part of the SSP, the Species Survival Plan. And endangered or threatened animals um, under human care are all part of an SSP. And what that does is it determines um, the genetic value of two hippos um, coming together to breed. So if you're going to have two individuals that are not related, um, those may be genetically valuable animals together. So while we have Uma and Timothy here, um, they're probably not going to breed with any other animals, but they are still part of that SSP, so they could become um, members 
to breed in the future. So it's pretty cool. It's a fun thing to talk about and think about. Yummy, look at all that delicious pippo poop hay that we're having to pull out of the pool. <laughs> and the reason we do that is, again, it helps out our life support system to not have to suck all that out of the water. So if we can pull any of it out of the hay grates, um, it really helps out the system. It doesn't have to work as hard to keep the water nice and clean. John would like to know what made you want to work with hippos or animals in general? Uh, John, thank you so much for asking that question. Um, I have always wanted to work with animals ever since I was really teeny tiny, you know, knee high to a grasshopper really small. Um, I've always loved animals and so it's kind of gone through phases. At one point I wanted to be a veterinarian. At another point I wanted to go out in the wild and do research as a scientist. Um, and it's always come back to I love animals so much and I'm really interested in how they learn. So it, I came down to I want to be an animal trainer and work closely with animals to help take care of them and teach them things that will help them um, thrive. And <laughs> I ended up working here at the zoo with our hippos. Um, I started off at the zoo as an intern. Um, how long ago was that? About five years ago, which is kind of crazy to me. Um, but I started off as an intern, and then I worked my way up to becoming a keeper. I worked at another facility for a while, training with marine mammals, which was amazing and a really cool experience. And now I'm back with the zoo. And my favorite animal here are our hippos, so I'm really excited to get to talk to them about you, uh, talk about them to you guys. There we go. <laughs> Any other questions, folks? No one would like to know how fast hippos can run. How fast do hippos run? Well, I know we said that they're really big, right? So you might think that they're pretty slow out of the water, um, but they are way faster than humans are, let me tell you. They can run up to about 30 miles an hour. So definitely faster than what I can run. Um, and they can also almost move that fast underwater. But kind of a funny thing about hippos is they don't actually swim. So we don't say that they swim through the water, but they walk along the bottom of the pool or the bottom of the rivers where they live, and it's almost like they're doing a ballet. They glide and they dance. Um, they kind of just bounce along the bottom as they go. Um, and kind of a fun fact, that's actually where the name hippopotamus comes from. It comes from the Greek word that means river horse, and that refers back to, again, how they move through the water. It's like they walk along the bottom like a horse rather than swimming, which is pretty neat. Great question. So she was asking, do all of our uh, animal care specialists on our team dive the pool or is it just experienced divers? It's based on comfortability level. So I am very confident in the water. I love to swim. I've been a swimmer for most of my life, um, as well as Justin and Tori. They're very comfortable in the water. We do have some folks on our team that aren't as comfortable in the water, and that's okay. Uh, we've got 14 people on our team, and as long as we have one or two have the ability to get in, our minimum requirements for having um, the hippo pool to dive is to have one working diver and one lifeguard, um, but the job gets done a lot faster with two people as well. So it looks like Justin's going for our double check. So we're going to tell him where he missed spots because there's always something that you miss. Um, looks like this window, yep, right here. So we're going to tell Justin, like, hey, come to this spot right here. He's going to scrub that extra clean. Very good. How many steps do you get in a day as a zookeeper? <laughs> How many steps do I get in a day? You know, I started wearing a pedometer for that reason. I wanted to see how many, how many steps we walked um, right here. But we, it depends on the day. So the different sections that we take care of are kind of all throughout the front half of the zoo for my department. And how many steps you get depends, um, kind of determines how far you walk. So right here, yeah, Justin, you missed a you spot, missed a dude. Big spot. No kidding. Although I will give him some credit. It's hard to get in there sometime and get all that algae. Catch your breath. Yep. <laughs> Tammy's asking how long they can hold their breath. I think she means the hippos. And the, <laughs> um, the hippos can hold their breath for up to 30 minutes. Now, definitely way longer than what I can hold my breath. We also have the ability to use um, like snorkels and things like that, but because we completely submerge under the water, a snorkel can be kind of useless if you're all the way under. But if you're just floating kind of near the surface, it's not so bad. Um, <laughs> he's getting tired, he's gonna catch his breath. Did you ever say how many steps you got? Um, the highest I've ever gotten was like 30,000 steps in a day. And I don't know how long that equals to distance wise, so let's go over to the other windows and see if Justin has any other spots that he missed. <laughs> Make him work. Make him work. Come on, Justin, swim this way. Happy birthday, Tanya. Happy birthday, Tanya. How old are you today? She's young. She's, She's young. Good. 
<laughs> Excellent. This one's got a little spot right here. And then a little spot down here in the corner. Somebody said uh, that they came to the zoo, saw the hippos, but would like to know if we have any ocelots. We do have ocelots, and that's another one of my favorite, favorite animals to work with. I'm so glad you asked. Was that, a happy um, thing you just that was a happy kick. Don't judge me. <laughs> um, now, our ocelot's name is Ricardo. Uh, he lives over between our two howler monkey groups right now. So if you guys are ever back in the zoo once we reopen, come check out our Amazonia area. He's hanging out between where the two um, howler monkey groups are, and it's lots of fun. So we're going to tell Justin, hey, good job. Windows are pretty clean, which is really nice. So, yes, no, if you guys have seen any of our other animal chats, I actually talked about Ricardo the Ocelot a couple weeks ago, so definitely go back and check him out because he is the handsomest kitty ever. Um, so you'll see him up close, and we do a little bit of training in that video, so definitely go check that out as well. Clara said she knows that we are at the hippo exhibit, but she would like to know how we clean the crocodile exhibit. <laughs> That's a great question. So we clean the crocodile exhibit the exact same way. Um, again, making sure that, boom, the croc is in his holding area. So let's go check him out so we can see what's going on down that way. Um, but again, same way, we pull him into his holding area, make sure the gate is closed and locked. Um, again, that's for safety. And then our aquarium staff and herpetology keepers will get in the water and clean his pool, clean his windows. But He's a reptile, so he doesn't produce nearly as much poop as the hippos do. So they don't have to get in the water nearly as often. Let's go see if we can find the big guy. Boom, where are you? Yeah, it looks like, you know, they may want to get in the windows here soon. <coughs> cough, cough, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> reptile keepers. Um, no, just kidding. The exhibit looks really pretty. I don't see him at the moment, but that's not unusual for me. It takes me a while to find him sometimes um, because they have really kind of excellent camouflage. They look like logs. They look like part of the exhibit. So if he's on the bottom somewhere, it takes me a minute to realize that, oh, that's a crocodile, not the exhibit rock. Um, but looks like he's hanging out elsewhere. We can't see him right now, and that's okay. Um, so I'm sure that those keepers have come down and chucked on him today, and they'll do it again this afternoon. So let's head back over to our hippo windows. Um, but it looks like our hippo keepers are wrapping up the cleaning, so that'll bring our chat to a close today. But um, I want to thank you guys for watching with us. It's been lots of fun talking about one of our favorite activities that guests don't normally get to see. So I'm glad you guys got to come and join us and see that. Um, we can't to see, wait to see you guys when you come back into the zoo once we're reopened. But in the meantime, keep hanging out with us here on social media. If you have the ability, we would really appreciate any donations that you have because while we're closed, all of our animals still need the awesome and world-class care that they get every single day. So any donation that you are able to give is greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, shout out to those of you who have donated. We really, really appreciate you guys. We love you a lot. We can't wait to see you and have a great rest of your day. We'll see you this afternoon with our other animal chat to 2 30. 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. There we go. Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. There you go. Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. for our animal chats. We also have Zen Zoo Monday through Friday at 10 30. That's where the 30 came from. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day.